Hey, good afternoon. Uh, thanks for, for uh, logging in. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for kind of sharing this little bit of time with uh, a devotional thought for today. I, I was uh, I picked up the newspaper today, which kind of tells you how old I am. I picked up a newspaper today and, uh, and took a look, and what I see is a lot of argument and a lot of wrangling about When's this going to be over? And when are we going to open things back up? And how are we going to get this done? And what's going? What does the future hold? And and there's this anxiety that that's underlying the whole situation of this virus of how long it's going to last and, and what's going to happen. And what does normal look like now? And this anxiety seems to breed uh, tension, and we see it in our in our uh, political system. We see it in economics. We see it uh, everywhere. And what it really illustrates for us is what happens whenever we understand that we ha don't have any control. There's our lack of control. The bottom line of this, the bottom line of this whole uh, spread of this virus is that there is no king, there is no president, there is no doctor, there's no governor, there's no mayor, there's no anyone here on this earth that has control over how this works. Right? There are things that we can do to mitigate it. There are things that we can do to, to, to be smart and to help try to help keep ourselves healthy and, and, and uh, safe from this virus. But really, we just have to admit we don't have any control over that. And when we ever decide that we don't have control, then it really begins to, to give us some anxiety because we want control. We want control so that we can feel secure. Right. If if I know what the next step is, if I know what what's going to happen with this, if I can manipulate things, then I can be comfortable, and I can be secure because I know the outcome. But what this has made us see, maybe as much as anything, is that we really don't have any control. That there are things that are way beyond our control. When I thought about this, and I was looking at all the the things going on with it this morning, and listening to newscasts and those kinds of things. A, a, a passage of scripture popped to mind. And it's probably not the first time this has popped to, to anyone's mind during this crisis, during this whole uh, pandemic, is the words from Jesus from the Sermon on the Mount. It's in Matthew chapter 6, uh, verses 25 and following, some things that we probably know very, very well, that we've got really close to committing these to memory, even if we don't realize it, Right? He says, therefore, I tell you, don't worry. Don't be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you'll drink or about your body, what you'll wear. Is not life more than food and is not uh, the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They don't sow, they don't reap, they don't store away in barns, yet your heavenly father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Who among you by worrying can add a single hour to his life? And why do you worry about your body, what you will wear? Look at the lilies of the field. They don't toil, they don't spin. Yet I tell you that even Solomon in all of his glory was not dressed as one of these. So now if this is how God takes care of the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow was thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? So don't be anxious. Don't be anxious saying, what will we eat? Or what will we drink? Or what will we wear? For the pagans run after these things. And your heavenly father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you as well. Therefore, don't be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious enough for itself, sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Now, we hear those words of Jesus and we say, that, that, that's, that's beautiful, isn't it? Right? Just don't be anxious. Right? God takes care of the birds. God takes care of the grass. God takes care of all these things. Don't be anxious. But then there are some of us that are that are watching this or even thinking through this and paying attention to the news and looking at all the numbers that are coming out and going, well, that's easy for you to say, Jesus. Right? Uh, I'm having to stay home. I can't work. I've got bills that are going to have to be paid. Or maybe uh, I have people who depend on me for their livelihood and I can't, I can't afford to pay them. But what, so, yeah, this is a, a nice thought, a nice sentiment, maybe a nice bumper sticker, you know, don't be anxious. But, you know, when it comes right down to it, th this is an easy thing for you to say, Jesus. This is not so easy for us. 
I want us to know a couple of things. First one is that we that that uh, that Jesus not only says these things, he demonstrates them throughout his life. Second thing is that Jesus is talking to people who know exactly what this is like. We talk about people, who, you know, and, and those of us who exist, you know, now and are struggling and going, well, we lived paycheck to paycheck. These people live day to day. He's talking to some of the outcasts, some of the least of these. When you look back at the end of chapter four, leading into the sermon, this seems to be the people to whom Jesus is speaking. They know what it's like, and he's telling them the same thing of going, wait a minute, just don't be anxious. God can take care of things. We have to acknowledge the fact that we don't have control. We don't have control. Jesus does talks about this in the model prayer, right? Back in, it's a few verses back, where he starts that prayer with, this then is how you should pray. Our Father who are in heaven, hallowed be your name, right? Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. It's, it's a relinquishing of our need for and our striving for control to say, listen, we believe that God has this. And so I guess the, the, the bottom line to this today is of, of just saying, listen, let's don't miss what God's doing today. Thinking about and being anxious about what God's going to do tomorrow. Today has been given, right? We've been given today. And there have been opportunities given for us to do today. Whether it's, uh, it's to reach out to someone around us. Whether it's to, uh, to, to serve the, our neighbor or just to thank God for the blessings that he's given us that we are alive, right? And that he has provided for us and that we can continue on. Let's don't miss the blessings of today by looking at and being anxious about tomorrow because tomorrow we have no control over it either. I don't want us to miss the opportunity that God's given us every day. I also don't think that this is a reason for us to say, well, we're just can, we're just can be reckless in this either. We need to stay informed. We need to know what's going on around us. We need to be informed, not fixated, informed on what's happening, looking out for others around us, but at the same time, seeing this and just acknowledging the fact that we have, we can't control it but we lean into the one who can. So I want us to thank God for the blessings of today, for the opportunities of today. Look around us at the ways that, the ways that he has blessed us instead of looking at, at things that we don't have. Count the blessings that we do and trust him that he'll take care of it again tomorrow. Can't wait to see you all again. Love you. God bless.